There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are the teacher of God, for no one can dress do the sign, signs that you do, unless God is with him. Jesus answered to him and said to, you, to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, he said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he, can he enter the second time through his mother's womb and be born? Jesus Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter, enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that is which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows... The wind blows where it wishes. You, you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So it, so is everyone who is born of, of the Spirit. So, as we said, many of us like to change the, the way we look from time to time. And uh, we had some volunteers this morning. Zach was very brave and uh, ended up dressing up as a bit of a boffin. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'm not sure that it will be my best career move if I, you know, moved over into becoming like a, a, a makeup artist. It's fun, isn't it, to change how we look on the outside. And it's quite easy to actually change our physical appearance. But there's one part of us that however hard we try... We can't do that much about. All right, so however many magazines we read about how cucumbers on your eyes are going to make your life immensely different when you wake up the next morning, the makeup that you buy, the colours that you put in your hair, the clothes and styles that you wear, none of it can really change what's going on inside us. Jesus said... But if we want to come into God's kingdom and become children of God, then we need to change on the inside. And that change, Jesus describes in that passage that Zach read for us this morning from the Gospel of John, when he has a chat with Nicodemus. And he says, you must be born again. Kind of a, a, a complete makeover, but on the inside. And the way that that happens is we need to come to Jesus. We ask him for forgiveness and a new life. And Father God then gives us the Holy Spirit who actually comes and lives inside us. It's amazing, isn't it? The Holy Spirit makes us new people and enables us to live as children of God. He helps us to love God, to love other people and to make those changes in our lives that we need to make. Now, we had the story of The Very Hungry Caterpillar this morning, that wonderful book by Eric Carl. And if you remember, it starts with a very tiny egg on a leaf, and the warm sun comes out. And a very tiny caterpillar hatches from that egg. And we see that he begins to eat and eat, but he's still hungry. And in the end, we find that he eats so much, he gets a stomach ache. Rather deservedly, I think, when we look at that great long list of food that he managed to get through. <laughs> and then the caterpillar eats through um, a nice green leaf and he feels better. And then he makes a house for himself, doesn't he? Called a cocoon. And he stays there. Does anybody remember for how long? Not two years. Not two years, two weeks. <laughs> well done.
done sort of in two weeks. Two weeks. And then he nibbles a hole and he pushes his way out. And we know, don't we, what happens? That he's no longer a caterpillar, but he becomes a beautiful butterfly. He's been transformed. Now, the story of the very hungry caterpillar reminds me very much of that story we heard that Zach read for us this morning. The story of a man by the name of Nicodemus. He was a a really religious man, and he spent a lot of time studying the scriptures, and yet there was still much he didn't understand. Nicodemus came to Jesus late one night, not because he was hungry for food, but because he was hungry for knowledge. He was hungry for spiritual food. He was hungry for the truth about the kingdom of God. And as Jesus was talking to him, he said something that Nicodemus didn't understand. He told Nicodemus, no one will see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. Well, Nicodemus was really puzzled by what Jesus said. You would be, wouldn't you? I mean, you can't understand if someone tells you that you need to be born again. It's a bit of a hard one. And to this day, people still have difficulty understanding what Jesus meant and how this could be possible. You see, just like Nicodemus, we tend to think about being born physically as a baby. And of course, that's a really important birth. (laughs) And George came um, this morning, didn't he, for us to bless him and to say thank you to God. But he was born and he's fit and healthy and well and has a lovely, wonderful life ahead of him. But this isn't the only birth in our lives. Jesus speaks about another one. One in a way that's even more important. And that's a spiritual one. Now, some people think that you can be born a Christian. They think that if you're born in this country and raised in a family that sometimes goes to church, then somehow you're automatically a Christian. Now, I've said this before, but that really would be like me saying that if you were born in a branch of McDonald's, you'd be a beef burger. No, it doesn't work that way. This is definitely not what Jesus is saying. (laughs) Jesus says that if we're to follow him, then we must be born again spiritually. You need to choose to be changed on the inside. Nicodemus knew that something was missing. He had a real need. He knew that he needed to change. Not on the outside. He didn't need a new set of clothes or a new hairdo. He needed a change of heart. And he knew that Jesus was the only person who could do this for him. When we think about the hungry caterpillar story, We see how the caterpillar was transformed into something beautiful. God didn't just take a caterpillar and stick wings on it and paint it. When the cocoon opens and the butterfly crawls out, it is a new creation. The old caterpillar's gone. It has now become something different a butterfly. And that's the way it is when we ask Jesus to come into our hearts. He doesn't just improve the way we look. He doesn't just slap a bit of paint on us, give us a makeover and send us on our way. He changes us from the inside as his spirit comes and lives within us. He makes us a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. So, you decide. Do you want to be a caterpillar or a butterfly? I know which one I'd rather be, but what about you? 
The choice is yours to make. Do you want to be transformed? Do you want to be made into something new? Are you ready for the ultimate makeover? Amen. Well, as we enter our response time, some of you here will know already what it is to be transformed. Your spirits are alive in Christ. You've been born again, and we give thanks for that this morning. But some of you aren't sure yet whether your spirit is alive or not. Sometimes it feels as if you're watching life through a black and white TV set instead of living in brilliant technicolor. And you feel ready for a spiritual makeover. Today is the day you make the choice to stop being a caterpillar and to seek to be a butterfly instead. Today is the day of your salvation. And still others of you may respond with a, a no. You simply don't believe it. Simply don't believe that you have a need and you don't want to make a commitment. That's fine. It's your choice. As long as you know what it is that you're rejecting, or rather, who it is. Jesus. Christ, the living Lord. And who knows, you may think or miss more once you get home. And you can always pray the prayer that we're going to pray together now in your own time when you're ready. But don't leave it too long. Because life keeps happening. And you'll just forget. And you'll go through life crawling on your tummy when you could be flying in the sky. I'm going to invite us to pray together now a response prayer. I'm going to pray for you. I'd love it if you were to pray alongside me in your own hearts and minds. This prayer really is for you this morning. If you have made the decision after listening to the caterpillar story, after seeing the makeover after looking at the conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus, that you want to be born again. You want your life to be new and different. You want Jesus to come into your heart. And this is the prayer for you. Okay, I'm going to ask everybody to close your eyes. All right, just close your eyes. Um, if anybody's going to be saying this prayer for the first time, um, I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand um, at some point so we know who you are, so I can come and speak to you afterwards. Um, and uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we praise you that because of Jesus, we can be a new creation. The old can go and the new can come. You tell us that if we ask you into our lives and our hearts, you can change us and make us beautiful. So we're asking right now. Lord Jesus, I am sorry for choosing my own way in life until this point. There is much I need to say sorry for, for those decisions that have led to other people getting hurt, for hurting myself, and especially for hurting you. I have made a mess of things. Please forgive me. I don't want to live life my way anymore. I choose to follow you. Please come into my heart and turn my life around. Change me. Transform me. I want to be born again. May my spirit come to life in you. I don't want to be a caterpillar anymore. Instead, help me become like a beautiful butterfly, ready to fly and give praise to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, please keep your eyes closed. And this is for you at home as well if you're streaming. Just raise your hand if you said that prayer for the first time. 
Jesus will see you.